We'll move into the next session. And uh, our next leadership keynote is on accelerating digital infrastructure, the key to the connected future. And our keynote speaker is Mr. Sharad Sanghi, who is the CEO of Entity Limited in India. Entity Limited is a $11 billion global technology services company. In this role, Mr. Sanghi is responsible for scaling one of India's largest full stack ICT service providers, enabling over 3,500 enterprise clients, business outcomes and capabilities delivered seamlessly across the edge to the cloud. This includes transformational solutions like managed hybrid hosting, cybersecurity, network modernization, employee collaboration, and customer experience. He is also the CEO of Entity Global Data Centers and Global Infrastructure India. With over 25 years of extensive experience in developing internet backbone infrastructure and providing internet services, Mr. Sharad Sanghi exemplifies what it takes to be a successful business leader today. He is known to generate returns for all stakeholders and be deeply connected in everything he does. We warmly welcome you, Mr. Sharad Sanghi, sir, and request you to deliver your keynote on accelerating digital infrastructure, the key to the connected future. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much, Raki. And uh, if, you, uh, if somebody could just put up the slides, and I'll start there. So thank you to the Infocom um, organizers. It is a privilege to be associated with this event. Um, sorry that we couldn't be there in person and we have to do this virtually. Uh, is somebody putting up the slides? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I'll start with the flow um, of uh, the presentation. Basically, I'll give a quick context of what is India's digital economy today uh, and then focus on three or four aspects of the digital infrastructure that we're looking to accelerate, which is mainly the data centers, the cloud uh, infrastructure, connectivity infrastructure, and the hybrid workplace and cybersecurity infrastructure that we need to, uh, for the digital ecosystem in India. Uh, I will then talk a little bit about what we're doing as Entity Limited in India uh, and about the investment that we plan to make with that we've already made and we plan to make in the near future. Uh, next slide, please. So very quickly, uh, I think most of you know the numbers. I don't want to spend too much time on numbers, but we have 1.26 billion people with a unique digital identity. Uh, and this is 2020 data. So I think we have a higher number now, uh, 697 million total internet subscribers, 500 million smartphone users, average consumption per smartphone is 11 GB data and uh, USD 0 0.09, uh, basically nine cents, average cost of one GB of mobile data, which is one of the lowest in the world. And uh, next slide, please. And what we've seen, especially after the pandemic, that data consumption has risen actually more than 13%. There is surge in remote working, uh, which is transforming to a hybrid work model. There is increased demand for virtual events and video conferencing. There's increased deployment of AI and chatbot services in digital interfaces, explosion in OTT video providers, social media and gaming services, and uh, a steady rise in telemedicine and tech sectors. And obviously we need the digital infrastructure to uh, is required to match up to the search. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, let me take you one by one on each of the four areas. So we'll go to the data center. Next slide, please. Yeah. So look, if you look at the data center infrastructure, uh, uh, India is poised for a massive growth and the market is supposed to go up to 5 billion by the year 2025. It's currently around a little bit over $1 billion in market size. The market grew by almost 33% in 2020. And there is a, a investment potential from 21 to 23 is actually more than 3.7 billion entity themselves is putting two close to 2 billion in this time period. And there is a 6 million square foot of development potential. Um, and from a fit out capacity, uh, the growth was from 350 megawatts to 447 megawatts. And from an occupancy capacity, the growth was 288 megawatts to 390 megawatts. We see a significant private equity investment in this space. All the top leading global players of data centers across the world have entered now in the Indian space. I think this is also largely aided by uh, data privacy and data localization laws. And of course, everything being consumed on the cloud, which needs to be um, hosted, this cloud infrastructure needs to be in uh, world-class data centers. 
and um, there is uh, almost 43% of occupancy by hyperscalers of uh, you know public cloud players and over 340 acres of land has been purchased by data center providers so um, but but one thing is important is as this mission critical infrastructure grows so does the responsibility to secure it so i'll talk i'll touch upon security in the later slides uh, next slide please if you look at the next aspect of digital infrastructure first is the the, the data center itself and then the data center houses cloud infrastructure and the cloud inf if you look at the public cloud services uh, the roughly three points if you across infrastructure as a service software as a service and platform as a service the revenue uh, from india was about 3.6 billion um, as per idc for the year 2020 and that is uh, supposed to go to close to 10 billion by 2025 which is a cagr of over 21.5 percent um, and we noticed this even in the uh, during covid that public cloud uh, uh, you know, drove business continuity, flexibility, and agility. I know of many corporate clients who were using uh, infrastructure in their uh, offices, and they just moved that to cloud because they couldn't even access their offices. Uh, uh, software as a service continued to be one of the largest components, and overall investments continue to accelerate. Cloud uh, is at the heart of digital resiliency, in, and, and cloud is also used as a very effective mean for uh, disaster recovery. Many, many corporate clients, even if they have on-prem infrastructure as their primary infrastructure, they use cloud for DR and backup. And cloud-first strategies will expedite the development process and deployment of business applications to meet the ever-changing needs of the business environment. Uh, next slide, please. The next piece, so we talked about the data center infrastructure, we talked about the cloud infrastructure. Now I'll talk about connectivity. So there is a slew of subsea cables. So India, you know, I remember when I started this business in the year 1998, we had a, you know, very little subsea cable and mostly satellite connectivity to the rest of the uh, uh, rest of the world. And now we have several cables uh, 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 landing in India, uh, in Chennai, in Mumbai, Kochi, and very soon in Calcutta. Um, in fact, NTT has a cable called the MIST cable that, that is going to be having three landing points in Chennai, Mumbai, and very soon in Calcutta as well. Um, there is the India Asia Express, there's the IEX, and there's also the MIST cable that NTT is setting up. So new cables infrastructure is coming up. There is the Bharat Net, which is the world's first fiber-based rural broadband project, which, uh, which, which uh, spearheaded by the government of India, the goal is to provide high-speed broadband connectivity to 250,000 plus village panchayats spread across India, 6,600 blocks and 640 districts. Uh, then there is the private 5G rollout that's happening across the world. India is waiting for a DOT to uh, approve this to happen in India, but there are already trials happening uh, in India. There are investments done in this space by all the leading uh, technology majors, including NTT. And this is expected to grow very, very, it's one of the fastest uh, areas of growth, basically using 5G technology within the campus. And so, uh, so it's something that uh, Department of Telecom has still to authorize in India, but hopefully this should happen soon. And then there is the space internet, which is broadband from space. And again, there are many people like Bharti, SpaceX, Amazon and others who are looking to launch these services. Again, we are awaiting the policy, but this is all these steps are going to improve the connectivity infrastructure and actually uh, combining the data center and connectivity there's another uh, set of in, uh, initiatives that are going to be launching which is the edge computing or edge data center uh, initiative you will soon see companies like entity and others launching edge data center infrastructure so that the uh, compute storage and network is closer to the end user that provide that allows local caching of content and provide better uh, especially for um, applications that are high bandwidth, for example, video streaming and other applications uh, with AR, VR coming uh, into Vogue and also connected cars coming to Vogue um, in the near future, uh, the uh, edge computing and edge data centers, you see a proliferation of this and you'll have data center interconnect services using the connectivity that both private and public operators are setting up, connecting these various data centers. Uh, next slide, please. Um, another uh, element of digital infrastructure is hybrid infrastructure or hybrid work uh, infrastructure. 
uh, of course, uh, you know, so especially with the pandemic, more and more organizations are adopting the hybrid uh, work, digital workplace in a hybrid fashion where some percentage of the com uh, employees will come to work and some will work from home. Of course, one of the key elements of this is security. And so a secure by design approach has to be entrenched in every aspect of digitization and workplace strategy, because this is, if you talk to all the key IT leaders, the biggest worry they have is security, especially when the employee is working remotely. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, I will, so when you, now that we've covered uh, the four key elements of digital infrastructure, I will just talk briefly about uh, some of the work that we're doing to accelerate the connected future in India. Uh, next slide, please. So when we talk to our clients, most of them say that they want to accelerate digital transformation. They want to, uh, in, they want to be able to scale as the business grows. They want efficiency and cost savings as they scale. And they want to use sustainable business practices. Uh, almost all the global clients and also all the large companies that we talk to in India want, uh, you know, literally insist on reducing carbon footprint. In fact, uh, we uh, we have set up, and I'll cover that later. We've set up multiple um, captive renewable energy plants because this is almost becoming a demand from the clients. So it's not enough to. Uh, do renewable energy for your own needs. I mean, obviously, we as a responsible organization have set ourselves a target of uh, uh, becoming carbon neutral by 2030 in India. Uh, but it's also a demand from all the major clients. Uh, next slide, please. So what we are doing is we're looking at five key areas to help our clients. One is designing the new hybrid employee experience for a return to the office. The next is next generation customer experiences to connect so that they can connect with their clients in new ways. Um, uh, the digital experience and automating operations, uh, you're using AI ops uh, and cloud to edge connectivity solutions, connecting any device to the cloud and monetizing and securing data. Uh, next slide, please. So some of the elements of digital infrastructure that entity has invested in or, and brings together is, uh, one is the next generation data centers, the network and connectivity. We have uh, one of the largest deployment of managed SD-WAN services in India, one of the largest footprints of data centers in India. And also now we're bringing in the MIST cable in the country. Uh, also managed hybrid cloud, so which is platform driven, based using a, um, a cloud neutral management platform, uh, platform driven managed services using artificial intelligence, platform driven managed security, again, using artificial intelligence and uh, managed collaboration services, uh, and of course, we want to bring in IoT and uh, private 5G solutions in the near future and, uh, and enabling the digital work, uh, business workplace. Uh, next slide, please. So when you look at the data center platform, uh, we have more than 160 data centers in 20 countries. And uh, we are one of the top three players in the world. And um, uh, some of the key elements of our data center platform is one is uh, carrier and partner neutral and also energy efficient because uh, sustainability for us is one of the most important things. And the, the beauty about the data set uh, of, uh, of being energy efficient is it also makes you more competitive. Uh, we also have uh, captive renewable energy plants for all our data centers in the country. Uh, either we set up ourselves or we uh, buy third party uh, through third parties. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, when you look at, uh, um, the, we currently have about 1.5 million square foot uh, that is already live and uh, close to 150 megawatts of power and um, another 2.5 million square foot under construction with more than 250 megawatts of power that is, that is going to be unleashed very soon. Uh, and all these data centers, as I said, are categorized with carrier neutrality, uh, security, safety, performance, and availability. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, from when it comes to the cloud infrastructure, we look at uh, most enterprises that we work with prefer hybrid cloud. Uh, most uh, uh, enterprises that we work with work with multiple clouds. So maybe different departments work with different cloud platforms. So what we've taken a cloud agnostic approach and we have what is known as an entity insight management platform, which can, which is a single pane of glass that can help you monitor and manage across multiple clouds and also on your on-prem infrastructure. So whether it's your private cloud or whether it's your public cloud, it doesn't matter. It's a common dashboard that helps you monitor and manage that. And, um, and we also have other services like 
helping you migrate from one cloud to the other or from on-prem to the cloud and provide you managed uh, services, managed security services, um, data center interconnect services so you can connect to the cloud of your choice and uh, uh, high availability disaster recovery services. Um, uh, next slide, please. And one of the uh, key elements is also the intelligent network, the where we offer consulting services, uh, WAN transformation or SD-WAN, uh, you know, transforming your normal uh, connectivity solutions to SD-WAN, uh, support services where we provide uh, connectivity and access automation. And this is one of, one of the areas where we have our automated data center interconnect service as well, and uh, a complete uh, AI ops driven uh, managed service suite which can give you insight across your various cloud infrastructure, analytics, and performance management. Uh, and of course, all of this is secure by design. Uh, Gartner positions entity as a leader in the, uh, in, uh, yeah, in the uh, global magic quadrant for network services. And um, uh, next slide, please. And we can go to the next slide, yeah. So uh, when it comes to, uh, so I wanted to touch a little bit about uh, security services because you talk about accelerating to the digital infrastructure. But, but one of the key elements as you go digital is security. So, uh, so there's a portfolio of uh, managed security service, services, which, it, which not only includes services at the, uh, at the perimeter, but also at the core, at the data center, at the end user. Uh, can you just go through the next, uh, uh, next button? Uh, next button again, yeah. Next, yeah. So whether it's on the network and infra layer, which, which involves denial of service protection, network vulnerability assessment and penetration testing, managed firewall and UTM services, also data center and uh, workload protection, where, where we look at uh, endpoint protection and EDR services. There's a, so if you look at all these services, they, you know, as a managed security service provider, it's basically managed detection and response services or MDRS. Uh, and and um, we also have pro provide a whole suite of application uh, services, which is application VAPT, web application firewall services, uh, and also brand protection and uh, digital asset management services. And of course, layered, uh, before we do any of this, we also have a professional services arm that helps architect some of these solutions. Uh, all these services, whether, whether entity provides or some other provider provides, these are very, very essential as you're building out your digital infrastructure. Next slide, please. Yeah, next slide. Yeah. So if you look at what is common, uh, it is an integrated services platform. So there is a common customer portal and using APIs, you can give visibility and management across compute storage network, uh, collaboration, application and security. Uh, next slide, please. And, and because of this, we are able to do a lot of, uh, you know, I, I don't want to go through all of these case studies. I don't think I have that much time. But we, we help our clients and communities to do great things with technology, including connecting the next generation of students to unleash innovation, whether it's connecting families and loved ones during the pandemic, whether it's connecting girls to a better future by helping them stay in school. Uh, next slide, please. Then these are animation videos that I can share later. And then connecting sport, uh, sports fans to a smart experiences of sport, connecting conservation to serve endangered species, Connecting, um, uh, enabling smart cities and communities. All these are, uh, ex all these have been enabled by the pillars of digital infrastructure that I talked about, and these have all been brought together. And these applications have been enabled very quickly on the innovations that have been done. Some of the five key trends that entity uh, believes will come uh, in the future are the all photonics uh, networks or APNs, uh, cognitive foundation technology, digital twin computing and the uh, uh, ro robotic pro process automation or RPA and quantum and edge computing. And at the research lab which, uh, of entity, which are present in both uh, uh, San Francisco as well as in, um, in Japan, we, we are work, doing a lot of work on creating a bio-digital twin, um, uh, attribute-based encryption for security, coherent Ising machines and neural networks. And in our data centers, uh, uh, both in India and abroad, we're looking at newer, ways of energy efficiency using liquid immersion cooling. Uh, and given that uh, Japan is a, a, a seismic uh, area, we, we look at how do we do seismic bracing to make sure that data centers are secure. So basically energy efficiency is a very important uh, technology for, uh, for us and our data centers. Next slide, please. And last, this will, I'll just end in a couple of minutes. Yeah, go ahead, next slide. 
So from an investment perspective, uh, we are in, we've uh, done a, in, uh, announced last year an investment of uh, or two billion planned over four years. Uh, last year we invested over five hundred million dollars, and we are building six hyperscale data center campuses and edge data centers across the country, uh, including Calcutta. Uh, the subsea mist cable system, which will have landing first landing station, will be in Mumbai and Chennai, and then Calcutta. And then a captive 200 megawatt hybrid wind and solar power generation that is already uh, already 82.5 megawatt is already been, is operational. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So these uh, our data centers, as I said, are sustainable by design. They are uh, certified by LEED. Both uh, the Bangalore data center has been awarded platinum LEED certification. Chennai was the first global LEED certified data center in the country, and um, uh, and we are also. Um, uh, you know, we are using um, uh, AI based, we are investing in AI based systems to optimize energy consumption for our cooling machines. Yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, the, we, we, can, we can proceed. Yeah, 62.5 megawatt solar plant in Solapur, Maharashtra, and a 20 megawatt uh, hybrid wind solar plant in Karnataka, uh, we, we, which will make around 83% of the power that we use in our data centers will be used by, the, by these. Uh, uh, renewable energy plan. So that's that's it from my side. Uh, thank you so much uh, to the Infocom organizers to give for giving us an opportunity to not only talk about the building blocks of uh, digital infrastructure, how we can access it, and what entity in India uh, doing to do the same. Uh, we are not the only ones. There are many other providers that are doing this, and I think if we come together, we can really enable the, the digital infrastructure to enable a smart and connected future for all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Sharad Sanki, sir, for that in insightful address. We are very honored and delighted that you have joined us virtually. We hope to meet you soon, sir.